reading from Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 to 14. The Valley of Dry Bones. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you, and make flesh come upon you, and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, This is what the Sovereign Lord says, Come, breath, from the four winds, and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied, as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says, My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done it, declares the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Emma. So having set the scene, looking at who the Holy Spirit is, his role and purpose, and the coming on all at Pentecost, I want to turn our thoughts to the significance for us today. And we're using the set reading for today, the Ezekiel 37, 1 to 14. And this reading is written by the prophet Ezekiel and is in the latter part of the book, written for the Jews in captivity in Babylon, focusing on messages of hope. So I want to pick out four very brief, short points from our reading. So at the very beginning, firstly, at the start of the reading, God took hold of Ezekiel. He was carried by the Spirit of the Lord to the valley of dry bones and led around the valley. I have some very dry bones here, and there's a few more on the floor they're plastic, don't worry, they're not, um, they're not real ones. Are. So, um, and I think there might be a picture coming in a moment which shows us a whole load. 
So we can imagine what it might have looked like, a whole valley of dry bones. Now, if that happened to me, I would be pretty freaked out. A valley of dry bones, very dry bones. Bones shout death to me. A valley can be steep. It's difficult to climb out. Who or what had had actually been trapped there in this valley? Couldn't escape. No food, no water. Perished. Rotted. Dried out. They don't look very inviting, do they? But God did not just take Ezekiel there and disappear. He stays with him as he leads him around the valley. Ezekiel says nothing. He looks around. We don't know what he was thinking, but he doesn't question God. Ezekiel trusts in God's goodness, God's desire to save his people, and so he waits. Secondly, God speaks to Ezekiel. Now, because Ezekiel wasn't running around like a headless chicken, asking loads of questions, why was he brought here, what's happened, what are all these bones about, what's happened, he was able to hear God speak. Ezekiel's quietness, his listening, his stillness allowed him to hear God speak. Thirdly, when asked if the bones could become living people once again, we once again see Ezekiel's total trust in God. Only you know, Lord. He doesn't respond with our restricted measurements of what is possible or not. I could connect these bones, if I wanted to, with bits of string and elastic, but it would still only be a skeleton. There's no flesh or muscle. But Ezekiel trusted and believed that God was capable of anything. And finally, see how the dry bones only come alive after Ezekiel called the breath from the four winds. The breath we heard about in Genesis, the Holy Spirit. Ezekiel had obeyed God, but life only happened when the Holy Spirit gave the bones breath. Even if I rebuilt this skeleton and blew breath into it, it would still not come alive. Life has been very different for us for the last year or so, and much of our lives, as we know, came to a halt. Maybe we feel we've been in that valley of dry bones, scared, unable to climb out. And now things are beginning to emerge. Shops have opened, cafes, restaurants. Life is starting to feel like the bones are reconnecting. And we wait. We can wait in prayer. Silent, listening. What is God saying to us? What questions is he asking us? We might feel God is asking us something enormous, insurmountable, like bringing bones back to life. But we must not measure in our human capacity. But in the infinite, miraculous, divine hope that we have in God, who can indeed do anything. Even when we believe we know what God is telling us, we need the Holy Spirit to breathe life into all that we plan, say and do. As we reopen our building, As we set off on this new adventure with God, we call on the Holy Spirit for his wisdom, strength, counsel, piety and more. As we proclaim the kingdom of God, as we join others in the kingdom work, 
we do so with the Holy Spirit in our hearts, body and soul. Which brings us full circle. Pentecost, the Holy Spirit, sent for everyone, the birth of the church. The advocate and helper that Jesus promised would be sent to us after he had gone. The breath that gave life to the valley of bones. The spirit, the breath that gave human life. The spirit that brooded over creation. Amen.